Welcome back. Today we are listening to Foreigner. This is not a first time reaction. I have heard many of the songs from this group, but this is a first time analysis. So I chose a live performance of the song Cold as Ice. Here we go. Okay, I I don't think I have ever watched a clip of them performing live. It is captivating. Uh, at the beginning of this, uh, so the singer here, Lou Graham, he was um, with Foreigner, I think, until the early 2000s. I had to do a quick fact check. Yes, Lou Graham was with the group until 2003, and then Kelly Hansen took over as lead vocalist in 2005. What I love about even just this tiny little vocal intro we got at the beginning of this piece is how soulful, soulful his voice is. Um, it is such a velvety, warm tone that we're getting, and and then, of course, we get that crisp, clear sound um, throughout this piece and textures come in and out. I love it all. I don't know if you guys noticed. I believe he's chewing gum. So this is kind of a short one. We're just going to I'm going to go back to the beginning to hear that some of those ad libs he did. I, hold on, the way he, his onset of this one note reminded me a little bit of John Farnham. It's so velvety smooth, but his attack is so powerful. And I think that's what's giving me John Farnham vibes, but. Obviously, two very different singers. Also incredible. Oh my gosh. Okay, focus. How, how much work his body is doing. It's so captivating. I love that the whole stage just went pitch black.
Look at that. <laughs> Just the words he's saying and the intensity in his eyes. What a great performance. He is so, so into this piece. And even when he's talking to the audience right here, you know, his posturing, it's not... I wouldn't say it's defensive, like in character, maybe you could say that, but just the way he's got, you know, his shoulders back, his chin raised a little bit. You know, if you were saying those words, willing to sacrifice our love, you know, you're going to be just a little, oh man, I'll have to think of the word, but he's portraying it so, so beautifully. You never take He is chewing gum. That is, <laughs> I cannot count the number of teachers like, or, you know, vocal instructors who will say, spit out your gum, spit out your gum, but in performance, and I understand, I understand why, but also in performance, um, a lot of singers suffer from dry mouth. I don't know if this is a thing for him. I've encountered a number of singers who you know, get off stage and they comment on, oh, the hall is so dry. I feel like I just, you know, I couldn't get things going. And one little trick, if you're not, you know, into chewing gum, you can kind of, um, not forcefully, don't hurt yourself, but you can kind of bite your tongue and that will help produce saliva. Um, but in this case, when he has great control over his articulators, you know, he's not worried about choking on gum or swallowing it or anything like that. It's probably helping with, you know, preventing any sort of dry mouth because depending on, you know, if you're touring, you just don't know from one venue to the next what the environment is going to be and how your body's going to react to it. You can only hope for the best, but now this just might be something that he does because that's who he is and it has nothing to do with the singing, but there are benefits. So we're going to keep going. Gorgeous falsetto. Let me go back. I'm so impressed with his intonation considering how forceful he is being with his onsets. You know, we're not getting any sort of waver in pitch. He's just locked in every time he opens his mouth and gets ready to sing a note. And when you're dealing with that much air pressure, you really have to have a lot of control in your larynx and those laryngeal muscles. You have to know exactly how you want a note to come out, how you want it to sound in terms of which muscles are at work and your registration. And he's just, I don't, it's so captivating. And I think that's why uh, this particular song, I mean, they have a lot of great songs, but I feel like this song perhaps feels approachable to people when they want to sing along or sing with because he's doing it in a range that I think 
isn't outlandish for, you know, the general public, especially if you just don't, you haven't flexed those muscles and you haven't stretched your voice. Um, But then on top of that, it's so loud and so present. So you can really just rock out to it. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna pause real quick. I know we're at the end. One thing I, let me go back to the beginning of these vocals. Two things I wanna point out actually. You'll notice at three different times, we had three different musicians playing something resembling a keyboard. I know they weren't all keyboards, but the fact that, I mean, just that side of the talent, how you know diverse these musicians are, awesome. Also, the fact that we have so many background vocals from the same instrumentalist, like, I just, I, this piece, I mean, it's repetitive. It does the same thing over and over. It's a great melody. It's a great, you know, great lyrics. And so they took something that was so simple and then they said, hey, let's add these incredible harmonies. Let's do this incredible pulsing in the keys you know to start it so you recognize the piece off the bat it's just musically even though it's so simple they just did so much with it and so here we get this sort of echo in the harmonies which i led me to point all of that out here we go If you can tell, yes, I did think the song was going to go a little bit longer than it did, but regardless, everything I said was true. I'm so impressed with what they did with such a simple song. I mean, that there's so many different kinds of music in the world, but I am I love watching groups take something just, you know, that on paper is just so bare bones and adding so many different elements to bring it to life. I think it's so cool. His vocals though, I just, he spends a lot of time in what I would consider, you know, a chest dominant mix. And it's 
for the most part, it's in a comfortable part of his range, so he's not doing a ton of screaming or anything like that. You can see how much he's working, but I think that's more um, the air pressure and the power that's coming out and less, you know, trying to attain certain notes. Uh, and then we do, we get a, those occasional, you know, slightly more head dominant mix sounds and, you know, this, the Foreigner has such an incredible catalog, so many different songs. We get, you know, love ballads and rock songs and just so many cool things. I'm going to stop there for today. Thank you guys so much for watching with me and hopefully I will see you next time.